Euzubillahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyallah, atiya Rasulü olun amri minkum. And always a reminder on abdukul aji, sadaifu, miskin, zalim, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah guided us on this path of ishq and love, granted us uh, immense blessings that no matter what we want, that if we will and think that we control our will and that we are going to will ourselves on a straight path, then it can only be through Allah and only Allah can guide the servant and take them onto the path of goodness and good character. And this is an immense blessing when Allah guides and Allah grants us to enter into Ramadan, Allah grants us to be in the associations of the love and ishq of Allah and the love of His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad These are all the immense blessings and Divine grace to live a life of continuous hamd, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, alhamdulillah to praise Allah as all His creation praises and that to praise Allah as He deserves to be praised, that His magnificence and munificence and that shukran lillah that Allah that we're thankful, that Allah asked that, thank me and I'll grant you more. Just live a life of thankfulness so that Allah will grant us more. These are the schools of good characteristic in which they convey to us how to achieve success in Divinely Presence. So alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah throughout the day at least hundred times a day, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. Ya Rabbi let me to live a life of hamd and praise as you deserve to be praised and as all your creation is praising you, my atoms are praising you, my soul is praising you, grant for my tongue, my heart, my mind all to be in that Divinely praise. And shukr thank you for what you have granted to me of my health, of my rizq, of, of my faith, of everything. Even if we believe in our life we want more, Allah says, thank me for what you have. And Allah knows best on what to grant more but at least we entered in into that key, unto that reality to be thankful and shukr, the praising Allah and thankfulness. This month of immense blessings, immense stress that those whom are not, they become lost from the difficulties of dunya and that's an immense sadness. They feel that they have done and they don't need to do anymore or they feel they're so good they don't need these things. Whatever the nafs puts upon somebody so that they don't achieve in their worshipness, that they don't try to excel within their worshipness means then their nafs has fooled them and their ego has fooled them. And that's the theme throughout Holy Qur'an that Allah is warning us that be careful that the shaitan, the, the evil whispering one, if it comes too close to the ego and begins to whisper that you don't need to do these things, you're a good one, you're a clean one, you're a pure one, you're the best one. And anyone of that status, their characteristic is an immense thankfulness. So it's actually the reverse. If we should in our life come across these servants whom they are pious and that they are close to the Divinely Presence, their entire being is in a shyness. Allah immense shyness that they don't praise enough, they don't think enough, they don't worship enough, that they have not shown their gratitude to the 
immensity of Allah's greatness which can never be understood and can never be accomplished. And they are the servants of love, that's what we said, they're not the servants of their mind where they analyze and become proud of their action, become proud of their knowledge, become proud of their works, but they realize it's merely a gift from Allah and they owe, they owe for that gift, they're accountable for that gift, that they're in a continuous state of worry that how can they please Allah more, how can they show Allah their thankfulness, how, how can they possibly express to Allah that immense love and immense gratitude. That's the characteristic of somebody whom in their heart may have a sense of piety. The false piety or false goodness and false comfort is the one whom listens to the waswas and begins to say, I don't need to fast this year, I've done so much or I don't know what you people are talking about, I'm a good person. And that's the danger, that's the, the whispering waswas of shaitan and, and bad ego, bad character. And as a result of listening to that waswas, they are drawing further away from Divine grace and Divine blessings. And that's the difficulty, as they begin to draw away from that Divine grace means that when we're thankful and humble and continuously trying to excel and showing our love for Allah it's like moving towards the fire. When you move towards the fire you feel the immense warmth of that light, the immense proximity and shyness that, Ya Rabbi oh, that you've given to me, how can I show more, how can I do more, how can I go out and get your attention, how can I do my dawah, how can I feed people, help people, how can I be something that you would look and be pleased with me and not to have regret that, look this somebody whom wasted what we have given or this somebody whom they wasted their life in the pursuit of their world instead of their hereafter. So that characteristic is moving toward the light and the one whom follows their nafs and follows the evilness and the whispering of the waswas, they turn from the light and however clever they think they are they still turned away from the light and as a result every step they make takes them into the darkness and into the cold and that's the sadness. They think they're clever, as much as you talk to them they're very proud and very arrogant. But the danger shaitan has flipped their compass and they're stepping away from the light. And anyone who moves away from the light begins to experience darkness. As a result of darkness comes ignorance and from ignorance comes a, a coldness because they don't feel the love and the embrace of the Divine the Presence and they become more ignorant and more ignorant. And as a result they begin to feel how they have been cut off from that Divine Grace. By, by then it's so far from the reality that it's very difficult to recapture oneself and to come. This is the danger of not connecting. This is the danger of the groups that say that we don't need a shaykh. This is a wilderness that beyond imagination, its landmines are everywhere. It's direction like a forest that you can't see where the sun is shining. So when we watch these movies they enter into a dark forest. You know that by the forest when they want to guide themselves they have to go above the tree heights just to see where the sun is. And by the direction of the sun they can tell if they're moving north, south, east and west. So means what? You have to have a connection with Prophet If you're not able to connect with the sun and the moon on earth, on earth you're lost. So nighttime navigation means in time of, of ignorance and fana 
Allah gave for us our guidance and navigation is the moon and the stars. So those whom traverse the world and all of its difficulties, they look to the heavens. By the moon and the stars they can understand what direction they're traveling and take themselves out of difficulty. And in the daytime if Allah was to throw you into a jungle and a forest, if you can't see the sun you become lost. You don't know which direction you're traveling until you've traveled so far from your destination that you've entered into the abode of hardship. That's why Allah's blessing is for guidance. So these people whom say, we don't need a shaykh, so then which direction are you going in this forest? Because the devil comes to you and Allah describes throughout Holy Qur'an that makes your deeds to seem fair for you. So when you're walking blindly within a forest, he's coming to you and say, you're doing good, you're great, you know, don't worry, take another step. And as a result they step, they step, they step but they have stepped so far away from Divine Grace. That's what we said their characters change. No matter even if they think they're keeping their prayer and then they slow down their prayer, then they don't really, really pray. They, they say, I don't need to fast this Ramadan, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. Whatever it is slowly, slowly shaitan begins to take away their goodness and their deeds until they become lost within a forest of, of complexities and the abode of confusion. That's for the one whom decides they don't need a shaykh, they don't need the compass, they don't need the guidance. But Allah gave to us the sun and the moon, gave to us the example within ourself and on the horizon. So when somebody says, why do I need a, a, a guide? So then why did Allah describe the sun and the moon? Other than an astrology class, Allah was giving a hint to the world of guidance that you need those to be guided on this earth. What about those whom encompass that reality within their being? That's what we talked about. Sayyidina Ibrahim's journey into the heavens last night and throughout the tariqah teachings that when we journey within ourself and we realize these lights and these energies and these realities are to be opening, when Allah opened the servant's heart means that their head become like a moon. Allah opens their heart and their heart becomes like a sun and from the shining light within their being that they're illuminated within themselves because they took this path, they took that guidance and as a result Allah opened His heavens within their being, that open the light within your heart. And I took that light and I made it to be a shams and as a result your heart is a shining sun, the light that illuminates from your heart it's your own internal guidance. If the sun outside does not shine, means a day of difficulty and darkness will come. When the dajjal comes, it operates through magic and magicians operate through darkness. Means that Allah will give to them their own heart and their own sun. And when your sun is lit and illuminated by Allah's Divine Lights, nobody can extinguish it. Because Allah has lit that heart like the sun and it burns through every badness and every, every element will be burned by the presence of that heart. And as a result Allah lights for them their own galaxy. As soon as their heart is lit it begins to illuminate their face. And that's why we sing the Qamarun, Qamarun because this, this is the way of that reality that their heart is lit and their faces are shining. The light that entered into their face as a result of the sun and the moon they walk on this earth with that reality. And so Allah is then teaching, if the dunya sailors and navigators and the seekers of dunya wanting to 
archaeology and go everywhere upon this earth, they need the sun and the moon. What about the one whom traversing this dunya to reach towards my paradise and my heavens? Means follow this path of guidance that the shaykhs they represent the sun and the moon upon this earth, that their heart is filled with the light of the sun. Shamsun nuran, no, Shamsun diya wa qamarun nuran. Their heart is lit with a divine fire. This was the diya and the fire that Sayyidina Musa salam went to go and seek. With this fire of Divine Love and this ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad their qal is lit with this fire, is a sun. As a result whatever is in their heart of this Divine Love it emanates upon their face and that way the student is finding their guidance. That in the depth of the darkness the student can connect and the light from the face of the shaykh will draw them on their journey back to the way of reality. And the love within the heart illuminates and gives a warmth and guidance to the student to bring them to the love and to the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Means that in these days of difficulty and we see more and more people left and right going this way, going that way, say, I don't need a shaykh, I don't need to follow, I can just be like regular Muslims, whatever that means and I just pray. And then they don't really even pray, they don't really even go to Jummah, means that shaitan has thrown you in a forest and now has you confused and you don't know which direction is left and you don't know which direction is right until they just stumble, stumble, stumble and what happens is they quit. They don't feel anything, they sense within their inner being they are lost and as a result they are overtaken by waswas because shaitan has isolated them and took them out and took them away and distanced them from the truth of that light. Means in this whole series for the last month that we talked about the reality of the bayat, that there is no Islam, there is no real Islam without the bayat. Without the bayat and, and the connection to take the hand and to fulfill our covenant with Allah means that fire is not reaching the servant. As a result of not reaching the servant they are just drifting left and right. And when Allah wants and what Allah wants to guide, Allah truly guides and He sets them to the guides from which their hearts are suns and their faces are lit moons. And as a result they take their bayat and initiation, they take the hand of that guide. But their bayat is to Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and their allegiance is to Allah is the whole teaching. Their allegiance is to fulfill, to fulfill the covenant of Allah which is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result of that reality then Allah is dressing them, blessing them with all these talks of love and light and that that light is a magnet that continuously draws them. So the ones who are meditating and contemplating means we can tell by the character of the questions that are coming in, the quality of the questions are coming in that people are practicing, people are learning, reading, educating, sitting and connecting. As a result of this connection this fires and light begins to dress the servant. They make their deen to be real, they give support, they participate, they, they, they're active in every aspect of the way and that's why then last night it began to describe that when your faith in action it's based on how much you make it real. Means when you have that love for Sayyidina Muhammad Allah makes the faith to be real. Everything that you're doing, you're making intention, Ya Rabbi let this be for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad to reach to the hand of Prophet to get the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad with that individual intention from that student for themselves Allah is the one who grants, Allah is the one who grants. No shaykh can claim that they grant anything 
But if they do their work right, they keep themselves out of the way, then the student uses them as a way to show Allah this is my love, this is my character, this is my commitment. With that Allah is the one who grants the faith and the reward in which we describe that many students may sit in the association and begin to see what Allah wants them to see. And others may sit in the association and see absolutely nothing. And they say, this, this is just a regular person. But that's for them and that's for their level of faith. Means that every level of faith is going to be uniquely based on that individual. That how much they put into it, how much they believe it and how much they stand by to it. Means then their aqidah, their discipline is the discipline of love. They are sadiq and they're truthful to this way of love and that love governs their every step. That determines their right and wrong and everything of that makes the character to be a beautific character, a fragrant character, a character in which Prophet is pleased with. And as a result anyone who follows that way Inshallah then receives the rida and satisfaction of Allah and the rida and satisfaction, the pleasure and the satisfaction of Allah the, the, the pleasure, satisfaction and forgiveness of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. We pray that Allah guide us always, istiqamu fi tariqat and that He keeps our feet firm upon our, our path and that this path of ishq and love its lights to emanate within the heart. We said the fastest, most powerful bond is the bond of love, not the bond of aqal, not the bond of aqal. The, the, the real aqal which… how you spell in Arabic? Ayn, a qaf and a lamb, right? So means that these people who say, oh Allah created aqal, use your brain and don't follow them. <laughs> but that was not the meaning of that reality. When Allah gave a description means that these are the people of Divinely love and for Allah it's not talking about a brain, a human brain for all the created universes why Allah is mentioning in His Holy Qur'an a, a human brain. Why Allah mentioning for Prophet to describe what, what was first created in Aqal. But Allah's ayn is for Allah's ancient knowledges, Al Qadim, it's ancient beyond our understanding of when Allah brought those knowledges and realities into existence. And as a result, it becomes the manifestations of the realities that are dressing Holy Quran. And that hits to the tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to illuminate all created universes. We pray that Allah open our hearts and open the reality and the oceans of light and love that are an eternal reality and that bond us, bond us to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and open for us Allah's ancient knowledges. The knowledges that are ancient and qadeem and that they manifest through the holy power of Qur'an and every qudra and every power that coming out and the only way to reach to that is through Nisan al-Haqq and the, the speech of Sayyidina Muhammad and in the world of light the tongue of Prophet is his heart, is the heart, the heart is a tongue. Not the physical tongue, this physical tongue is nothing in comparison to the speech that comes from the heart. We pray that Allah dress us and those whom their hearts are open, they hear that speech, they feel that speech and they are eternally dressed by that speech. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun an mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa basi Rasulatil Fatiha.